Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. We are here. Very exciting. I just tipped a woman $41 in Starbucks. And remember that Bruce Springsteen song, 41 Shots, that he did when Amadou Diallo was shot by the police? 41 Shots. All of Bruce's fans, I was at his concert once, I don't know, 99, 2000, something, and all of the Long Island fans and uh, pretty much everyone they all went for, like, a cigarette during that song because that was the big, like, hey, the cops should stop shooting black people song. And as soon as he was like, 41 shot, everybody's like, ugh. Everybody's like, let's go get a beer. And then they came back when it was, you know, born in the USA or something they didn't understand. Um, uh, but I tried, and the reason was I gave her a $50 bill. I'm not saying I'm a good person. I don't do this a lot, but I do, I do tip people well. Um, but, and I don't, do crazy stuff. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not the, the, you know, David Dobrik used to go and give people Lamborghinis and stuff, and, you know, somebody was in, it was mired in debt, and he was like, here's a car you don't know how to drive, and it's worth more than, you know, it's like the craziest thing, but YouTubers do it all the time. They're like, hey, today, I'm going to give my parents money, you know, and they would go like, here, with mom and dad, I paid off your house, and the mom would cry. <laughs> I've never done that. I'm not doing that. I'm not, what am I going to do? Buy the mental institution that my mother lives in? I'm going to go back to the lunatic asylum that she's in and go, surprise, mom. Guess what I did? I bought the mental institution that you live in. What? You know this place? I bought it. I got in bed with a shady healthcare company. We're taking money from the government. We're doing some Medicare fraud, but the good news is you get a slightly bigger room. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, no. So there's no, what am I going to do? She's in. She's in the clink. I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't design her brain, but it's malfunctioned. Um, and so I never, and my father is doing fine. I love him. We speak. He's doing great. He doesn't need anything. These people on Long Island don't need anything. Him and his wife have a lovely life. They drink wine. They have dogs. They walk. They boat. They, it's good. It's good. If I showed up and paid off their mortgage, they'd be angry with me. They'd think it was some kind of scam. They'd be like, who do you think you are? How did you get our information? Like, no, no, but you can't do anything good for anyone where I'm from in Long Island. It doesn't work. It only puts you at odds with them long term. So this woman who is a portly, a larger woman, which now that I'm working with a trainer, and I've worked with a trainer for two days, and I'm on the My Fitness, you know, the fitness pal it's not always a pal because it'll tell you some hard truths, but you put <laughs> you put the thing, you know, if you eat, a, if you breathe, you have to put it in two breaths and it calculates, you know, shitting, you, you know, you go shit, shit, you know, whatever it is. You don't do that. But you put in, if you eat like a churro, you have to put it, you know, churro and you have to, thunk, and then it tells you, it tabulates and then you have less and less at the end of the day. And then the goal is to be all zeros, like your cal- calorie allotment, your macros, your fat, your carbs, your protein, is all whatever in in line and um and uh I, I so what I realize now is weight is an issue of class, kind of, meaning that there are people that are overweight because they they just don't have access to the same type of food that other people do. Now this is obviously a little abused, right? As a as an as a people, this is a little bit of a crutch. Everybody can find a carrot, but not everybody's going to eat a carrot. And you can't live on carrots. So my point is when I see somebody working their ass off and she's a big woman, I'm, you know, I feel like let me give her money so that she can do something good for herself or for her family or whatever. And I'm not, again, I'm not, this isn't I'm trying to be a good person here. I'm just saying, and the reason it happened was because she didn't have change for the 50. And she goes, do you want to use a, do you want to use a a credit card or Apple Pay? A friend of mine who was in the store with me, we're in the coffee bean. And I said, well, no. I said, why don't you just keep it? And this woman was so horrified by that, by the idea of that. She thought it was like some type of, she goes, no, no, I cannot. I said, I want you to keep the money. She goes, no, it's $8, you know. It's too much. I said, no, you do something nice. You do something nice for yourself with it. And then she she somehow makes change. 
and then puts the change in the tip cup and goes, take your money. And I'm like, no. And I, I'm wondering, is she like an addict? Can she not have cash? Is there like a reason she doesn't have cash? Is she going to take $40 right now and go buy something she shouldn't have? A rock? I don't know what she's going to do, right? Like, she was so terrified by that. And in Los Angeles, displays of kindness are so incredibly rare that I understand. So I told her, I was like, I'm, I, I was a tour guide on a double-decker bus, and I used to rely on tips. And, no, and a lot of people didn't tip. And there was a black guy in the thing, and he was like, you a tour guide? You a tour manager? And I was like, no, I was a, a guide. I would show people the buildings. He's like, damn. And I was like, he was so he was a cool guy. And then he's like, what do you do now? I'm like, oh, I'm a comedian. He's like, you a comedian? And then we looked up. So then you feel like a piece of shit. And then we looked up the Netflix special, and she's like, I'm going to watch it. The good deed's over. It's been completely washed away. Now, by the, like, there's people in there going, what is wrong with this man? So people that are going to see me go, this guy, this guy is harassing people to watch his fucking <laughs> Netflix special at the Coffee Bean. All I tried to do is quietly give this woman $40 for her to go buy drugs. And she didn't do it. But that's what I mean about the pitfalls of uh, being nice. I'm doing a lot. Of, I do a lot of shows in LA, and they've been a lot of fun. And we've been talking about the Ukraine a lot on the podcast and on the show. And a lot of people have told me they said, "Well, you seem pretty. Uh, you seem pretty like anti-Ukraine." And I'm not anti-Ukraine. I'm anti taking the American war machine's word for it about any conflict anywhere in the world. And if you were not an idiot, you would be too. I feel horrible for the people of Ukraine. We had a kid on. Uh, a comedian on when this first thing, when this started, you know, uh, seven, eight months ago, 10 months ago. And we had him on and, you know, it was uh, incredibly sad what they're going through. I don't think anybody is happy about that. I've been somebody that wants that to end. I don't want nuclear holocaust. I don't want a war that destroys all of Ukraine. I don't want any of that. I I don't know what's going to happen. I, I hope that, you know, I've always hoped that, that Russia would say, okay, we're done. But it doesn't seem like that's realistic with Russia's current leadership. In fact, they, they keep mobilizing people. They're, they're calling up more troops. The attacks are getting worse and worse and worse. So, And when the American war machine goes, we'll support Ukraine no matter what, no matter how long, wink, it means they want a 30-year Cold War that will just destroy Russia and bleed Russia out and make people here a lot of money. Instead of forcing some type of agreement um, or even trying for some type of agreement. Um, so again, it's not, and again, I'm, I'm not, you don't absolve Russia. They invaded the Ukraine. They invaded a sovereign country. Wars are never good. Wars are never about, you know, one thing. Usually they're more complex. And what bothers me is the narrative that everybody is fed all the time in this country is like good, evil, right, wrong. There's, and here's the line. And if you even go, well, why is that that you're like, yeah, with that? It's not, it's not realistic uh, that people are not going to have questions. You're not going to go, wait, 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 what the fuck's going on? Explain to me what's going on. We, I just want to know what's going on. So I'm going to play a, uh, a battle right now. And this is something, I'm rarely serious on the show, but I'm going to be serious right now because this is disturbing to me. I, there's carnage going on in the Ukraine right now. There's carnage. And it's something, and I'm, I'm actually texting an attorney. I don't even know if we can play this. This is footage that I got from uh, a person on the front lines. That's footage that I got from a person on the front lines. And um, it's, it's one of those things where uh, I'm worried as a broadcaster because if I play this footage and it alters the course of the war or something happens, I, and I, but this is literally, this has not been seen on the media. This is footage from the front lines sent to me from... What's going on in Russia and the Ukraine right now? I'm dead serious. I just got the okay from my attorney. I'm telling you right now, if you have children in the room, this is not for them. But as adults, we all have to understand the stakes and what's going on. Play it.
I don't know. It's hard to watch that. <laughs> and I don't know which side, admittedly, because they all look so similar, I don't know which side is, is Wylan. But Russia or the Ukraine, someone was Wylan, and then someone came in and then fixed that. But what I'm saying here is that the war's a problem, okay? And we need to figure out a solution. If we're going to keep seeing scenes like that, I mean, it's crazy. They, we're, we're, and we're, we're, we are, the, um, the United States is sending in the equipment. They're sending in the waffle irons. They're sending in the coffee burner. They're sending in the griddles to make the hash browns smothered and covered. They're, they're sending in the machinery of death so that this war can go on. That wasn't, that wasn't the Ukraine. It was a Waffle House. See, that's... They don't have Waffle Houses in the Ukraine. Otherwise, things would be peaceful like they are here. Hello? Can you hear me? My name is Hella Fresh. You get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients for your seasonal cooking recipes. Delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy and fun and affordable. That's why it's America's meal, number one meal kit. I'm telling you right now, you know what's so easy for me is when I wake up and I have a pre planned routine of food. And if you're like me and you're on the go, are you on the go? Are you on the go? You're on the go. Because what happens in this world is you're just so, like, busy with everything. With the kids and the wife and the husband and the job and the traffic and the politics and the family and the dogs and the cats and the everybody. It's just you're being pulled in a million different directions. And you don't have time to make a nutritious meal for everybody. And you've got New Year's goals. And HelloFresh is here to help you achieve them. Skip the grocery store. Take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh's festive fare collection features limited time recipes with seasonal produce and premium proteins. Get out of the post-holiday slump with these elevated winter classics. Looking for an easy way to eat well and save money this year? Cut back on expensive takeout and delivery and get started with HelloFresh. You'll love how fast, easy, and affordable it is to whip up restaurant-quality meal right in your own kitchen. It's fun. You get the recipes. You get the food. You get to cook in the kitchen. You get to have a little glass of wine. You know, and everything's right there. And You have the, you know what I mean? You can, you can have baby back ribs, chocolate chip brownies, and everything in between. I love that that's tailored for my audience. It's like not... It's like nothing healthy. They're like, it's called Hello Fresh. Then they look at my audience. They're like, you can have butter cake and baked beans. Like, I'm sure, like, somebody else's audience, they're like, you know, Mandarin chicken salad. My audience is like, don't you want baby back ribs? How about some cookies? I've tried Hello Fresh. I have it. I use it. It's great. I love cooking in my kitchen with the ingredients that I get from a farm. And that's what makes me feel good. I look at my kids and my wife, and I say, look at the meal that I've just made. And they say, thank you very much, most of them. One of them is nonverbal, but we're figuring that out. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TimD21 and use code TimD21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TimD21 and use code TimD21 for 21 free meals plus free um, But Putin shipping. has a new plan. He's calling up these drug addicts. And this is, by the way, I am a big fan of this as an idea because I've been a drug addict. Many would say I still am. Uh, my addictions and compulsions come out with food and cigarettes and all kinds of things. And I try to keep them, uh, I try to keep them down and, and choose the light. But drug addicts can be very useful um, they don't have anything to live for. This is what's good about a drug addict in a war. They have nothing to live for. If you are in the depths of drug addiction, and by the way, if you're in the depths of drug addiction, don't use this as some excuse to do something heinous. You know what I'm saying. Clean yourselves up. But I'm saying, if you're really in the depths of a drug addiction, you really don't have anything to live for. You don't care about anything else except the drug. So those people are bodies that can be thrown into conflict. Let's do a close-up. Russia sends drug addicts 
uh, to war, uh, it, to mobilization uh, numbers here. Now, close up on these guys. These are the guys that I think may turn the tide. Go all the way to the right. Look at this guy. He's, look, the, the little guy is great. Rogan is fighting with him. <laughs> but no, to the right, go all the way to this guy. He's, he, that guy is drunk right now. <laughs> He's hammered right now. And I, I like the look of this. This is a motley crew. You know, it reminds me of the Sandlot. Remember the movie The Sandlot where you'd have a bunch of, you know, it's like neighborhood kids and there are like a, or a scraggly rat pack of, you got the fat kid and the ginger and the skinny kid and the wimp and, a, and then everybody's going to come together at the end and, and kill people in the Ukraine. That, I think, is this because it's a motley crew of, of junkies and drug addicts and people that are in Russian prisons for stealing and stuff. And what Putin has said is you have a chance to regain your glory by going to the Ukraine and fighting. And I think it's a fight, like it's a, we know everything, you know, we, this is, we don't want a war. We don't want a war to happen. But if it gives Russian convicts and drug addicts a purpose, it's not, it's not all for naught. Like we want, you know? And if you look at these men, they just seem ready. They seem ready to go. <laughs> They seem ready to go. They seem excited, and they're ready to go. Let's read a little bit of this article to see. So Ukrainian intelligence believes that Russian uh, President Putin is preparing to announce another wave of mobilization. And here's the thing. All of these things are war propaganda from both sides. We don't know what's true, but that's the fun. Russia is sending drug addicts to war in an effort to meet its mobilization quota. The information about the massive mobilization of drug addicts was... <laughs> It's amazing, like, who are these drug addicts? Like, they're just, the, the information about the massive wave of drug addicts was confirmed by one of the Russian soldiers who surrendered to the resistance movement. According to him, he was not cured of addiction and continues to use drugs while fighting, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, <laughs> Zaphorizia. The man took the drugs with him as medicine. Well, why would you stop drugs in the Ukrainian war? Could there be less of a reason to get sober than fighting a war in the Ukraine. And so I, I don't know where they're finding these drug addicts. Where are they getting them? Are they just getting them off the street? Are they going into the schools? Convicts offered a ratio of criminal records if they serve. Here we go. To leverage people into enlisting, the Kremlin has weaved leniency into long-standing legislation, meaning, like, they're getting a little desperate now. They're like, let's get the criminals. Let's get the junkies and bring them over. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. You have a bunch of... Is that the Azov Battalion's fucking uniforms? They look sick as fuck. Dude, how sick... That's what they're fighting in? In beanies? Like that? Is this war even happening? Is this a wag the dog? No, I think it is happening, but... I will say that... Um, you know, I feel like we're in the end of it now. I feel like we're... It's kind of like Avatar in the third hour. I was like, wrap it up. Like, I feel like we're getting to that point with it now where it's like, you know, where people are kind of like, hey. Ah, too much cinnamon. Go get that money back. Um, Elizabeth Holmes, by the way, did you hear this? You expect, now Elizabeth Holmes was this bitch who was selling these fake blood e-meters to diabetics because she had all these people invested in uh, this Theranos company. You know, Bad Blood is the book and the movie and all that stuff. And basically, she got sentenced, and she then tried to flee to Mexico. She tried to flee after a conviction. I mean, I mean, it's the woman. See, she first of all, she only got eleven years. It's not a lot. I've talked about this before. This is not enough to dissuade anybody from doing this. She was giving people fake blood tests. Didn't work. She's giving people a test where they go, "I think I'm okay." I mean, that's the human cost of this. They give her 11 years in jail, 
and the bitch wants to go to Mexico. She tries to flee, and I guess they catch her. I mean, it's like, listen to this. The government, here we go. Prosecutors said in a filing that Holmes' legal defense had argued that she had a flawless pretrial record, but does not mention her, quote, attempt to flee. They said the government learned on January 23rd, 2022, that Holmes booked a one-way flight to Mexico, scheduled for January 26th, but a return flight was not scheduled. Well, I do that a lot. You book one, you don't know when you're coming back. The government then mentioned the trip to Holmes' defense attorney, and the flight was canceled after that. She was probably just trying to go see Mexico. She was probably just trying to go get her margaritas on and see the beautiful ancient Mayan ruins. And yet she's accused of fleeing. She's surrendering herself to custody on April uh, 27th, we hope. Or she'll flee again, Elizabeth Holmes. We've got our eyes on you. I, was, I read that book with, uh, you know, with the, look at her. She's, she's just, she's one of those people, she thought it would work. You know, some of these people, they really think the thing, you know? Because everybody's told this horse shit when they grow up that, like, you can believe. You're like, just believe, believe. And then that, you know can lead to good things where people are like, I lost 10 pounds, you know, and then whatever, you know, but then believe could be you just start selling fake blood tests to diabetics. That's also, and you go, just believe it'll work, believe. And she, you know, she constantly looks like she's in some kind of catatonic state. Like she's not fully with us on planet earth. Like she's just kind of glazed over Elizabeth Holmes, she's, yeah, there's a glaze to her. Look at that. There's a glaze to her. She's not fully here. She's not fully here. She's, there's something, she's somewhere else listening to the song. You know, we were, we were at the improv the other night and a woman came busting into the green room and started telling Trevor Wallace about his higher self. And she's like, she goes, your higher self is the girl and your, she goes, your higher self came to me during the thing. She goes, I'm a, I'm a whatever. And I'm a spiritual whatever they call themselves. And she goes, I'm sitting here and your higher self um, came to me and said uh, that your soulmate was the girl from the joke where you have some joke about a girl making fun of you for eating carrot cake. And she goes, your higher self came to me and said that that is your soulmate. And then Trevor Wallace was like, okay. And Trevor Wallace actually was dating that girl now, so it was kind of weird, you know? And then I was like, did my higher self say anything about the Ukraine <laughs> to you? Because so I talked a little bit about that. Did my higher self get involved? One of the most exciting things about a new year is that you have no idea what adventures are in store for you. From new travel experiences to new jobs to picking up new skills, there's no better way to prepare for 2023 than by learning a new language with Babbel. Babbel is the only language learning app that's sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easily bite-sized language lessons, you can eat everything's food for my audience, huh? Bite-sized language lessons? Fry up some lessons with Babbel. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson. You can start having real-life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts and voiced by real native speakers, not computers. Their teaching method has been... And when America falls, where are you going to go and how are you going to communicate? Babbel speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. So Babbel teaches you not only how to speak in the language, but how to do the very cringeworthy accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your language learning journey today with the Babbel. With the Babbel. With the Babbel. With the Babbel. That's the way foreign people talk. With the Babbel. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babble.com slash T-I-M. That's bad. And I'm going to, I've been doing this because I want to learn other languages and it's actually been working. Me gusta helado. 
That's babbel.com slash Tim for up to 55% off your subscription. That's babbel.com slash Tim for 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Our, I like Greta Thunberg now, and, I, and I'll tell you, because it's been a while since I've checked in on her. What I like about her is in the beginning, like Greta Thunberg was this kind of like, you know, you kind of like annoying environmental, like I don't want to go to school and you, you better start using brown toilet paper and planes are gross, you know? But now she's evolved into this Joker type character who I think wants to just blow things up like a real eco-terrorist. And I think she just wants to like burn things down and strike fear into the hearts of men, which I kind of like, even though this is all set up. The Germans, here's the thing with the Germans. When you make soap out of a race of people, you really have to do a lot on the back nine to make up for that. So what they do all the time is they really just let left-wing lunatics do a lot of crazy shit because most people in Germany, a lot of people in Germany are Nazis and it wouldn't take much for them to be Nazis again. Like, if they knew there was a pathway for them to go right back to being Nazis, they would be Nazis, because that was a period of German greatness, truly. And I don't mean it was good, it was bad, but to the to German nationalists, that was their era, right? So what the German government tries to do is they try to, like, they go the other way, where they let, they like, let all the migrants in, and some of them, some of them are going to goose you on New Year's. Enough, with, you know, <laughs> don't complain that Turkish guy grabbed your tit. We made soap out of people. You got to let this stuff happen. The Turkish guy got a little handsy in the march. Sorry, we made soap out of people. We got to let this shit happen. So that's really what it is. Truly, that's what the drug, they go on the, they're, they're a little bit, and they have some weird S&M stuff. You know, they, they, they like, they, 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 they tie businessmen and stuff to tables and they shit on glass and they jerk off under it. They're in the blood and piss play and stuff. And it's all very deep, repressed kind of, but, but some kind of cool in a way. And they have these raves and underground tunnels in Berlin. So Greta Thunberg is being detained at this protest. And, and, and the German police, they've kind of set this up because the police are told, obviously, we can't, hurt Greta Thunberg. She seems kind of German, right? The name Thunberg, it seems a little German. Like, they're like, listen, we have to deal with her, but we're going to arrest her. And they're saying, of course, that it is not like a, um, it, that it wasn't stagecraft, like it was real. But, you know, it, it's fake because they've caught video. There's video of the cops and Greta kind of having, but by the way, I've been arrested and I've had cops be kind of friendly to me and I've said a funny thing and they've laughed at it and that wasn't a fake arrest. But there's video supposedly of Greta being arrested and she's, she's it's kind of like a cute arrest. Like this is cute. This, she's smiling. It's kind of like the, the media's there. Everybody knows... Everybody knows what, you know, she's doing. What they should have done is, like, if they wanted to... Look, she's standing there. She knows how this is all going to go. This is all, you know, like, programmed ahead of time. And what they should have done is they should have choreographed it where she's thrown to the ground, and they put their boots on her, and they they rip her hands behind her back and carry her out. Like, you ever see the scene in the casino where Pesci's like, open the door with his head? Like that, that should have been the way they took her out, just like a like like a battering ram. And they shouldn't have hurt her, but it would have made it more realistic, you know, because they're in those stormtrooper outfits, but yet they're carrying her out uh, like a little baby. So what you're seeing is like nobody's satisfied by this. You know, I would if if I was directing this, which someone is, I'd be like, more struggle, Greta, honey, struggle, get her on the ground. We're gonna get her on the ground. Then you guys put the boots on her. We want to see you struggle on the ground. We're gonna snap the arms back behind you. We're gonna pick you up. You're gonna be screaming, okay? Maybe a muzzle. Should she bite? Should she spit? Okay, wait. Take two, Greta. It's it's not going to be biting, honey, but it's going to be spit. You're going to spit at them. I stunk and duck. Yes, yes, that's a good idea. So when you spit at him, you're spitting at him. He's going to maybe 
smack you light, like a, like a mime smack kind of smack. And then once you've spit, it'll then it gives them the direction where now they're going to have to muzzle you. You understand? Because in this scene, honey, honey, are you with us today? Okay, we just got to focus. We're losing light. We're shooting and we're losing light. So here's what, in this scene, you're very, very angry because, what are they even protesting? What are they protesting here? The Greta Thunberg, uh, oh, a coal mine. So honey, in this scene, you're, vi- you're, you're a girl uh, from the, you know, whatever, what is she, Dutch, Denmark, Sweden? Swedish. Greta, you're a Swedish girl, and you're famous, and you hate the coal mine because this coal mine makes the air black, and when you breathe in, you don't get the sweet air. You get just the tar of the coal, and you don't like that, and you're very angry, and you see these cops, and the cops come in, and they represent everything that is wrong, patriarchy, militarism, capitalism, and they come in with their their big batons, these phallic symbols, but you, you see you, Greta, you stand there and you kind of stand your ground, and they're going to take you into custody, the young girl protecting us all, saving us from ourselves. Now, when they take you into custody, you have to struggle, you have to fight a little bit, uh, because they're going to eventually muzzle you. You spit at one of them, and then they come in and they, they muzzle you, and then we can see... How should we do? But I think what happened was then they got notes. This is what happens sometimes when you're in a production and somebody goes, here's the reality. The studio feels that this needs to be, it needs to feel more symbolic. We don't want to see Greta roughed up. We don't want to see her spitting and we don't want to see her put in a muzzle. We've really decided that the move here is just to carry her out kind of respectfully. We don't want to walk her out because that seems too easy. So we do want the shot of them carrying her but we're going to nix the spitting and the muzzle, okay? Okay, Greta, change the plans, honey. You can go to craft services, get her a juice. No spitting, no muzzle, no struggle on the ground. They are going to lift you up, and they are going to take you out. As they're taking you out, you do a light smile because you're smiling because all of your ideas about the world have been made real by these scary men that are taking you. You understand that? And this is how in five years we can take everybody's car. Yes, that's the goal. This is how in five years we take everyone's car. So we just want to get this perfect. Ready? And action. And that's what they do. It's a production. But, you know, I would have said, make it a little more rough. But apparently somebody came in and said, you know, because Germany's trying to, they're trying to emerge as the moral leader of Europe, <coughs> which is tough to do when you have the past that they do. So what you're seeing happen is they're trying to be very delicate and handle these situations very artfully. And I think they did a decent enough job with this one. I like Greta. I like her because, you know, everyone's got a part to play in this world. Everybody does. And, I, and she's doing it well. It's not Academy Award yet. Yet. Nobody starts out Robert Pattinson. They start out as one of these idiots on the Cobra Kai. And then they, if they're good, they get to that thing. I've talked about ShipStation for so many years. And everybody I know who's tried it, including me, is so happy because they handle all the back end, all the shipping. If you have an e-commerce business, you need to be focusing on, you know, lead generation, marketing, getting new clients, acquisition. This is the move. The front office is the most important part. The back office is just to facilitate getting your product shipped, making sure everybody's happy. It shouldn't be stressful. Running a business can be stressful, but using ShipStation is easy. They work with all of the major shippers. It's amazing how easy they make it. You can automate one simple dashboard, all these routine shipping tasks, print shipping labels, easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment and automate delivery notifications. And with enterprise solutions that make warehouse optimization easy, ShipStation scales when you do. With the best discounts in the industry, you'll never worry about overpaying for shipping. Get up to 88% off USPS and UPS rates. And if that's not enough, use my promo code, try ShipStation free for two months. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce businesses with ShipStation. And 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Keep growing your business all year long with ShipStation. You know, 
my friend makes little voodoo dolls and sends them to people and they curse people that have wronged them. And she uses ship station. And it's been amazing for her. She has a thriving business of selling these voodoo dolls. Use promo code Tim Dillon today at shipstation.com to sign up for your free 60 day trial. That's shipstation.com, promo code Tim Dillon. Friend, and this is, you know, a sad story. We don't love this. Alec Baldwin, who's a friend of the show and was very kind to us, he had me on his podcast and he's a, you know, he's a, he's a real star, you know, and he's, again, he's done, there's some things he's done that, you know, obviously you wouldn't co sign the shooting of the lady. Um, but we don't do it. He do it on purpose. It seems weird that he would do it on purpose. Right. So they're trying him for involuntary, um, manslaughter. I love this. Alec Baldwin charged PR experts, a star on Hollywood blacklist. It's like, what about the involuntary manslaughter charge? Isn't that more important? So he won't do the Trump impression this year. It's like on (laughs) SNL. It's like, what about the involuntary manslaughter? But it's weird because this is how I understand it. Alec Baldwin gets to the set. Um, I don't know why there's a real bullet in this gun. It seems weird. Alec Baldwin, uh, the person who put the bullet in the gun is also being charged, and I believe with involuntary manslaughter. This costume designer or this props manager. You know, I was just on a thing where we had props. I was on this it's film, and maybe my scenes in it, we'll see. And um, you would go and we'd get props. And then the props would, you know, you would you would go and they would put the props. I can't talk about it, so I can't tell you what the props were. But you'd get the props in the beginning of the day. You would de-prop at the end of the day. You would give them their props. And nobody shot anybody in the face. Now, so this, so the, okay. So Alec Baldwin and the armorer, they call it the armorer. Well, that's a creepy. But the armorer will be charged uh, with the same thing, which is the involuntary manslaughter after fatal shooting of Halnia Hutchins on the set of Rust, the movie here. And, um, okay, so that woman's name is Hannah Gutierrez-Reed. She's the film's armorer. And each will be charged with two counts of involuntary manslaughter. Play that up there. I wonder what that is. He's reacting to this. He's unhappy. I don't know if this is him reacting. But this is this is the chaotic moments after the shooting of Russ. So after Alec Baldwin has shot this woman, this is a oh oh d- this is an ad. Okay, it's an ad. We just motherfucker. The ad fooled me. Oh, I know. I thought we were getting rickrolled, yeah. But here, so we have we have this is footage right after right. Now, does Alec in this seem he seems distressed? He's a he's not he's unhappy with this. I would hope, like, this this thing is like, he's not happy. So this is right after we have volume on this? Okay, well, he does seem he does seem remarkably composed <laughs> after it. It doesn't seem like the greatest. Doesn't seem like the greatest. You know, I was there in rehearsal. I was asking myself, um, but I've met him, and I I do not believe he did this on purpose. So I don't know. I you know I from from what I believe, but I also don't believe. To be fair is fair. I want to be fair here. Maybe he'll call me and scream at me after this. <laughs> but like I I feel like he's a person that maybe he doesn't have as much empathy as he should. He may lack a little bit of empathy, and I think part of that is because being in the in the system for as long as he's been in it, he may not have the empathy, or he may just not show the empathy. Like I don't. I, when I met him, I felt like number one, he didn't do it on purpose, because why would he do it? But number two, I, I, was it keeping him up at night? I don't know if it was <laughs> keeping him up at night. I think he slept soundly. I think I think he was sleeping soundly. And I, and I, not again, not that I'm saying that somebody should go to jail for sleeping soundly, but 
it, it's come off a little bit. Like, I don't know that there's been the requisite amount of mea culpa after shooting someone in the eye. And, um, yeah, it's his composure. that That's the thing. It's There's no, like, oh, my God, is she okay? How did this happen? I can't believe it. I shot someone and she fell to the ground. It's more like... Earlier in rehearsal, I was saying to myself, <laughs> how could I ever, how could you ever, would anyone believe I would just shoot this woman and she'd fall to the ground? But these are actors. And when you're a real actor, and I've done this over and over again, I'm not going to explain it again, but I will for one minute repeat myself and go, these people, they're always kind of acting. If they're good and he's good. And I, I just think that he's playing that role and the role is kind of of Alec Baldwin. He's playing that role. So when he comes across like that, it, it, I don't know that, you know, most people, if, if somebody told me, hey, at the film that I was just on, if somebody told me, you just shot someone in the face by mistake, I would hope, by the way, I would hope I'd be inconsolable, like a mother of however many kids, like, if I killed a person, like, you would think I'd be inconsolable, I'd be throwing myself on the floor, crying, no, my kids, no, and how did it happen, and, Maybe I wouldn't, but this is what I'd hope I... But but the composure that he has is, I think, what disturbs people. Has he reacted to this? Has Alec Baldwin... Because supposedly he's raging behind the scenes. This is what people are saying. Now, obviously, we don't know if it's true, but he's very angry because I think he was, kind of, was going to have a little comeback. I would have loved to do something with him. You know, he called me, and, you know... He said, like, maybe there's a sitcom for us. He really even said that, which I would have loved to do. <laughs> Listen, because everybody's on a black... You know, he shot a woman. I sat next to Alex Jones. You know, hey, let's all, you know, we move on. We do a fun sitcom and everybody, you know, everybody gets over it, but... Um, so he hasn't, but his wife has. Oh, Hilaria has, and she's doing the Spanish accent, but I think she should be allowed to. First of all, she's under duress. I've always supported... Uh, her, her, uh, you know, need to be any race she wants. What is she saying now? We, by the way, we support. Okay. I want you guys to realize that we have seven kids, and you being here to escort them to school and to be there when they come home is not good. So on a human level, they have seven be there when they come children. Home is not good. They have seven kids he never stopped having kids it's like imagine having to explain this to seven children one child it would be hard seven times daddy shot someone at work seven times daddy shot someone at work Waffle, daddy shot someone at work. <laughs> Waffle, daddy shot someone at work. Waffle, daddy shot someone at work. One of them's a vegan, probably. Sprouts, daddy shot someone at work. But it, just the idea of that, such a large fit. I mean, God bless, God bless him. We're, listen, we support the Baldwins because he might get out of this somehow and have it. I would love to be a part of like his return. It's a sitcom, picture it. Spacey, <laughs> Baldwin, Dylan. No? Yes. I love Helix. In my house in Long Island, we have all these Helix beds. They're less expensive than other beds I've bought, but they're actually the best beds. Everybody loves the Helix beds. It's true. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. So if you're a fatty bun batty, you will maybe require some type of firmer mattress. Uh, that you will still depress with the size of your mass, but it won't take as long, okay? They have a mattress for big and tall sleepers and even a mattress made just for kids. So how will you know which Helix mattress works best for you? You take the Helix sleep quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in, on your, in, in, your, in your baby, in your baby. Okay, sorry, let's do this again. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night risk-free trial. Try out your new Helix mattress. See how your body adjusts. And if you decide it's not the best fit, you're welcome to return for a full refund. Everybody is unique. Everybody sleeps differently. My, my aunt, for example, in the middle of the night, she gets up and screams and she's gotten a knife and runs in the backyard. So everybody has a different... She starts screaming... They think she's regressing. She has these, she went to this therapist 
And what the therapist did is they did past life regression therapy. And in her past life, she believed she was a Nazi, a, a Nazi's wife, a high-ranking member. And she feels very guilty about that. So that's why in the in the yard, she goes with a knife and screams. We don't know. But this, but she loves, but since she got a Helix mattress, she does not do this as much. Not only is the mattress the best I've slept on, but the setup was fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box and straight to your door for free. Plus, Helix mattresses are American-made and come with a 10 to 15-year warranty, depending on the model. And remember, you will get to try it out for 100 nights. Literally, I've advertised a lot of shit on the show. I'll be very honest with you. They gave me these mattresses for free because we kind of asked them to. I have bought Tempur-Pedics. I've spent thousands of dollars on mattresses. These are the most comfortable mattresses I have. I'm, I'm not even lying. These are the most comfortable mattresses that I have. And they were inexpensive. They were free for me, but they were inexpensive for you. And literally everybody that stayed at my house in Long Island, everybody goes, the, where are, where did you get these things? Literally everyone. And I say Helix. And I'm not lying about it. This is genuinely amazing. Like when we did all those FTX reads, you know, we didn't, we should have done more due diligence, but this, I am not fucking around with. I have these things. We sleep on them. And they're made in America by Americans, and that matters. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tim D. Helix is offering up to $200, did you hear that? Off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tim D. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Here's the thing. I agree with her. I agree with Ilaria. Mm -hmm that uh, they should let it play out. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, this is a tragic thing. A woman has lost her life. Uh, there's going to be a court case about this. It's going to be handled. And, you know, we can't, we, we, you know, we stand back here. But, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think Alec Baldwin did it on purpose. Um, do I think that he is, you know, maybe his, his, the way he's talked about it has been a little callous and, you know, people have been maybe disappointed by that. But here's the thing I'll say about Alec is that everyone grieves in different ways. Everyone grieves in different ways. And maybe his way to grieve this woman's death is to be stoic. Maybe he's being strong. Alec might be, he might be being strong. And some people go, oh, he doesn't care. He shot that woman, he doesn't care. He only, he's only thinking about his career. Perhaps. But also, maybe he's just being strong. And don't we need strength? Don't we need it? This chat bot, this Google chat bot, everybody is uh, up in arms over this. Google is now calling in help from Larry Page and Sergey Brin uh, because this chat bot is getting everybody up in arms. Last month, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, Google's founders, and by the way, we got to cover these things because... These stories are eventually uh, going to become your life. Whether it affects you now or not, it's going to affect you eventually. Um, so Google's founders held several meetings with company executives. The topic, a rival's new chatbot, a clever AI product that looked as if it could be the first notable threat in decades to Google's $149 billion search business. Mr. Page and Mr. Brin, who had not spent much time at Google since they left their daily roles with the company, reviewed Google's AI product strategy. According to a couple of people with knowledge of the meetings who are not allowed to discuss them, they approved plans and pitched ideas to put more chatbot features into Google's search engine. And they offered advice to company leaders who have put AI front and center in their plans. The re-engagement of Google's founders um, emphasized the urgency felt among many Google executives about artificial intelligence and the chat bot. The bot, which was released by the small San Francisco company OpenAI two months ago, amazed users by simply explaining complex concepts and generating the Ukraine war <laughs> and generating ideas from scratch. More important to Google, it looked as if it could offer a new way to search for information on the internet. So the, this chat bot, which apparently will, AI is going to, they, they estimate that 
some troubling uh, amount of co online content, 80 or 90%, something crazy, will eventually just be generated by AI. Even, even shows like this will be replaced by some type of chatbot, some type of angry um, Irish AI, because AI can harness uh, meaningless rage and, and you know, weave it into uh, some comedic form, I imagine. So all of these things are coming. And what's interesting is we're... We're, when we talk about things like this, we're documenting uh, the destruction of the human race. And what has happened is Google has like, wait a minute, we're destroying the human race <laughs> and the need for people to think on their own. And then this small company out of San Francisco, OpenAI, goes, actually, we are also destroying the human race at a pace that may be quicker than you. So then what happens, and this is how everything gets done in, in the world, Google flips the fuck out. They go code red. They are destroying the human race at a faster pace than we are. Fuck, we gotta get back in the lab. And that's essentially what Google's doing. But make no mistake what AI is. Artificial intelligence is going to replace human intelligence. This is what people want. This is what will make things more efficient, uh, art is going to come from AI. NFTs are already coming from AI. All of this stuff, right? Basically, uh, AI is replacing human function at a kind of an alarming rate. And it's even scarier when you think about where this eventually goes, you know, and uh, what happens to people. Um, yeah, the new AI technology has shaken Google out of its routine. They declared a code red. And they, they're now jump-starting AI development. Google now intends to unveil more than 20 new products and demonstrate a version of its search engine with chatbot features this year. So Google's like, fuck it, we're, we're in. Our chatbot's gonna be better. Our chatbot will tell you if your kids are trans and it'll tell your kids if they're trans. Our chatbot will get rid of you quicker than their chatbot will eliminate you. So this is the real debate here. It's interesting. Mr. Brin and Mr. Page have taken a laissez-faire approach to Google, but this has scared them when someone else gets ahead. This is how all the things in Silicon Valley happen. One person goes, I can do it, and then another person goes, well, actually, I've already kind of done it, and then another person goes, fuck, and then the fight to make it happen makes it happen much quicker. So we can start eliminating human beings maybe in a couple of years as opposed to 10 or 15. Like we can really we can really get in there. What is the chat? Let, let's look at again what a chat bot is. I mean, AI, we all kind of know what it is. It's artificial uh, intelligence. It's technology that can think and generate ideas. I mean, somebody explained it to me once. They're like, what if you as a person could read every book ever written instantly? Uh, you know, these, it, it, and this is what Elon Musk talks about all the time. He goes, if we don't merge with artificial intelligence, we will be defeated by artificial intelligence. This is something that Elon Musk believes. This is why we have Neuralink. And that's, that's kind of what he's doing with Twitter. You know, it's kind of interesting. He's going, if we don't merge with Nazis, we will become Nazis, which I like. You know, he goes, we'll be defeated by them if we don't kind of merge with them. So we have to kind of let start the merger process. But yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's creepy, all this stuff. But there's nothing, there's nothing about it uh, that can be stopped. And there's nothing about it that anybody wants to stop. Everybody is basically just like waiting for these people to unveil this new product. And we hope, and they're just basically hoping that they have some type of job at the end of this, as soon as the chatbot comes out. They're hoping the chatbot doesn't destroy their family. They're hoping the chatbot doesn't destroy their job. They're hoping they can still show up Monday and somebody doesn't go, actually, with a chatbot is now handling that. So that's what they're trying to do. They're basically uh, just react. We're all reacting. None of us have any clue. And it's not stoppable. Nobody wants to go back in time. So we're all just going to have to figure out how to live with this technology. And that's, I think, what, you know, a lot of smart people are trying to do. And they're trying to say, how soon are we going to need, how soon will I be advertising chips on this show that will be implanted in you? The shitty chip. I mean, we'll get the shittiest chips. We'll get the chips that like, you know, 
They'll be giving them to incels or whoever they think our demo is. We will not get the good chips. The good chips will be given out. We will get the shitty chips, but they will be something. You'll get something out of it. And um, and that'll be uh, what we do. And we'll, we'll have to market this stuff. What, do we have a choice? That's a thing. You know, I, I, I think we're fully, we're fully on board now with the idea that we just don't have a choice. And it's kind of interesting. The end of humanity, is, it's, a, it's, a, it's interesting. It's not good. And I don't, I don't I, I, you know, but everybody's got to go, I think, at some point. And I think this is our time. This is our time now to go. And we're clamoring for it. I mean, there's companies that are, are going to debut these new products. And they're going to compete as to whose products are better. And the end goal of these products is to eliminate human beings in most tasks on Earth and replace it with uh, automation or, or really AI, artificial intelligence. So you, don't, you know, so you don't need the woman who just made me that non-fat decaf latte. That woman goes away. And it, she's replaced by some sort of chat bot. So this is something I, can I explain? I can ask the chatbot something? Yeah, give it a prompt. Explain Russia and Ukraine war in the style of Tim Dillon. Let's see what it says. They're saying that the chatbot is going to replace a lot of white collar workers. You know, automation is fucking the blue collar people, but now this will fuck the white collar people. Oh my God. Listen, <laughs> folks, the Russia-Ukraine war is a real mess. It's like a big old game of chess, but instead of pawns, it's people getting killed. It started in 2014 when Putin decided to flex his muscles and annex Crimea from Ukraine. That's like if Canada decided to take Maine. It's not cool, but didn't stop there. Oh, no. Putin's not one to back down easily, so he starts stirring the pot in eastern Ukraine. Pro-Russian separatists start protesting, and before you know it, there's a full-blown armed conflict. Now, I ain't no expert on the matter, but it's pretty clear to me that Russia's been providing... Support to separatist rebels. And the result? Thousands of people dead and over 1.5 million people displaced. It's a real humanitarian crisis. Now, the international community, they're trying to do something about it. But it's like trying to put out a fire with a squirt gun. See, thank God this thing's not as good as me yet. But it's scarily close. This is scarily close. Bottom line, folks, this conflict is a real mess. It's a shame that it's come to this. And Putin, well, he's just playing his own game and he doesn't care who gets hurt in the process. It's not quite me yet, but it's terrifying. That is terrifying how close that is. Let me tell you about Blue Chew. No, imagine, see, that would, if the chat bot said, let me tell you about Blue Chew, I'd blow my brains out right now. This is crazy. You will not need human beings because we've all ignored it. A lot of people have ignored um, the transformative uh, tech stuff because it doesn't affect them, right? If you were a bank teller, uh, you know, maybe your job got lost because of like ATM machines, automation, whatever, restaurant workers, people that worked in factories for sure, they got fucked the hardest. But, you know, white collar people, it never really affected them. People that did jobs where they talked or researched or did things that were considered like white collar jobs were never affected. Now this is fucking scary. Now we're going to ask the chat bot. Let's ask this. Is Kanye West correct? <laughs> Let's see where the bot stands. Is Kanye West correct? The chat bot just wrote, it depends on what you were referring to. Kanye West is a public figure, and he has expressed a wide range of opinions on various topics. Some people may agree with his views, and some may disagree. Without a specific statement or claim from Kanye West to evaluate, it is difficult to determine if he is correct or not. Okay, chatbot's a Nazi. Chatbot, <laughs> that is the, that is the, every one of the per people I know that's anti-Semitic, that's exactly what they would say. They go, well, it's really, if you said, is Kanye right? They go, most people would be like, fuck, no. This thing's like, it's hard to say. <laughs> it's difficult to say. There's many things going on, many opinions, many people. That's wild. So even this AI chat bot is kind of like, huh, I don't know. Ben Shapiro or Steven Crowder chat bot. 
Where do you stand in the bi- in the big con melee? Ben Shapiro or Steven Crowder? Let's see if Chatbot weighs in. The answer is Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder are both conservative commentators who have gained a significant following for their political commentary and analysis. Oh, interesting. So the chat bot is kind of refusing, understandably, to take sides in these hot button issues of the day. It's scary how close the chat bot is. How about this? Chat bot, explain fitness as Joe Rogan. Fitness, folks, it's all about taking care of yourself. It's about pushing your body to its limits, mom, and seeing what you're capable of. It's about feeling strong, feeling energized. And it's feeling like you're in control of your own body, mom. Now, there's all sorts of different ways to get it. You've got weightlifting, cardio, yoga, martial arts, mom. Whatever floats your boat. But at the end of the day, it's about finding what works for you. Weightlifting, for example, it's a great way to build muscle and get strong, mom. But it's not for everyone. Some folks prefer to focus on cardio. You know, get your heart rate up and burn some calories. Yoga, man. That's great for flexibility, man. And balance. And balance, man. And martial arts, man. That's not just about getting fit. It's about discipline, man. And self-defense, man. Pretty scary. It's pretty on. It's pretty on the money. And it terrifies me as somebody who works, uh, you know, uh, and makes a living blabbing his fat mouth. I I just wonder if this is going to eliminate podcasting because eventually will an AI just podcast? Like, will an AI just get on here and throw these sloppily conceived opinions together that are not really based in anything uh, other than a, a very simple knowledge of any issue? a very surface knowledge of any issue. It's it's pretty terrifying watching this and knowing that I will one day be a victim of this thing. This is coming to eat all of us. There is no way that any of us survive something like this. This is what you're looking at here. I mean, this is going to be a huge problem for people that have made their living kind of like I have or anybody in any institution that is doing any type of research or analysis, fuck. I mean, thank God it's not as, uh, hopefully I'm a little funnier than the chat bot. But it did, it did come, it did come pretty close. And this is, uh, this is a little scary. Now, how about this, right? Let, let's ask it like, I'm trying to ask it like, I want to ask it a, uh, a, a question that will, It seems to be very good. I love the way they ended the Rogan thing. So, folks, get out there, mom. Find what works for you and start getting fit, mom. It's like, but what if I said, like, explain, what if I said, explain, hmm, I'm trying to think, like, explain the election like Donald Trump. The election, folks, it's a huge deal. It's a chance for the American people to make their voices heard and choose the leader of our great country. And let me tell you, it's a choice between a winner and a loser. <laughs> now I'm running, and let me tell you, I'm the only candidate that can make America great again. I have a proven track. I mean, yeah, I mean, they just, it's amazing at mimicking people and the way that they would say things. And it's, it's because, you know, I mean, this is like, this is the type of technology, you know, there's certain stuff where, you know, it starts to get scary. And, like, Postmates isn't scary. I mean, I guess it might have been if you explain, you know, Sebastian Maniscalco has that great joke where he's like, if, you know, you told somebody 50 years ago some guy in a black Cadillac's going to pull up outside your house, you don't know him, and you're just going to get in, they'd be like, whoa, what the fuck? So I I think if you explained anything to anybody, Airbnb, anything, right, somebody's going to stay in your house, like, technology is always a little scary because it's incredibly disruptive, but I will say... And I'm not one of these guys who goes, we should all go back to the woods and start chopping wood and that, you know, 
that uh, technology has no place in society. But I will say this is a little scary. It's a little scary to me thinking about the implications of something that has so much, uh, you know, ability to, to mimic humanity. And, you know, this is, this is the argument, right? This is why Elon Musk is like, put the fucking Neuralink in and just like, you know, we got to become supercharged human beings or we're not going to be able to defeat this. As soon as AI becomes sentient or the AI starts, you know, we're no longer asking the questions. Maybe the AI starts asking the questions of us. Like, you get to a point where you get fucked, you know? I mean, these things will take over. The machines will rise. And maybe this is just, this is just the way it works, right? This is the inevitable demise of humanity is all of this stuff. It's, it's very interesting, you know, to watch, you know, these things. Uh, they're being born before us. And what's great is that these things are probably going to destroy us and that we are competing about who can bring them out first. We want to be the first company. Like, there's companies right now competing for who can do this the best. And we're really, you know, suffering if we think uh, that this stuff is not going to come back to bite us. Uh, explain politics as Sam Bankman freed. Interesting. Politics, folks, it's all about power. It's about who gets to make the decisions that affect our lives and shape our society. And let me tell you, it's messy and complex business. We've got politicians, but da 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 da. Now, as a trader, I understand how markets work and how to navigate the complexity and volatility. Similarly, I believe that politics and policy can be understood and navigated through the terms of markets, the lens of markets. And that's probably exactly what he would have said or has said. So, I mean, this is pretty scary. It's pretty scary. Final question. Is Alec Baldwin guilty? Final question to chatbot. Is Alec Baldwin guilty? Our friend, friend of the show, whom we support, not all his decisions, primarily the that one. Is Alec Baldwin guilty? And the answer, I am a language model trained by OpenAI. I don't have the capability to know or follow the current events. Alec Baldwin is an actor, a comedian, he's a producer, he's appeared in many films and television shows. He's also been involved in various controversies throughout his career. I'm not aware of any recent news or evidence that would indicate that Alec Baldwin has been found guilty of any crime. It is important to note that the United States, a person is considered innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Alec Baldwin is typing this. <laughs> it is not appropriate to make assumptions or accusations about someone's guilt without solid evidence and a fair legal process. Well, well, we're done. We had a good run. It was great. We made it. We're going to make it till about 2025. Humanity ends 2025. Right when Greta Thunberg gets her first girlfriend. When Greta Thunberg gets her first boyfriend or girlfriend, but let's be honest, girlfriend. When Greta Thunberg gets her first girlfriend, humanity uh, will be um, over because the chat bot will win. We just asked it, when does humanity end? And it literally says, when Greta Thunberg gets, no. Yeah, it's just going on and on. It's worth noting that the end of humanity doesn't mean the end of life on Earth. Life has been here for 4.5 billion years. It will continue to evolve and adapt. Humanity is just one of the current species on Earth, and other forms of life will continue to exist long after we are gone. Is that not creepy? That's a little creepy. That's a little creepy from the AI that goes, hey, what's humanity going to end on Earth? And the AI goes, hey, man, humanity is like one life form. It's not really a big deal. Will AI take over humans? Artificial in intelligence is a rapidly advancing field, and there's an ongoing debate about the... Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, it's just kind of giving the party... It's not going to let you know. It's not going to come right out and go, yes. But it would be creepy. If that thing just said yes, I would just get in my car and be out of here. But it is creepy. And it's going to get even more advanced and better at its job, and it's going to sound even more like Joe Rogan or more like me, and that's terrifying because then you won't need your favorite podcasters. You're not going to need us. 
were going to be replaced. And it's good to see the white-collar people finally getting it. It's good to see the scientists and the researchers and the analysts and the people that are telling you you should get your 15th booster. It's good to see them maybe lose a job or two. We've seen a lot of people lose jobs in factories. We've seen a lot of restaurant work get automated and shit. It's nice maybe to see a few people lose jobs here. This is going to be the biggest, this is going to be the biggest jump that technology's ever made that I've ever witnessed or that any of us have ever witnessed, 100%. There's absolutely no coming back from this. This is what's interesting. There's no coming back from this. You don't have to use Postmates. You can cook, you know? Most things are about convenience. Most technology has been about convenience. This shit, there's absolutely no coming back. When you fucking open these doors, there will be no closing them. And the speed at which we're opening them and the pride we're taking in opening them and trying to get there first, it is a little terrifying, you know? It is scary, and uh, I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm a little, uh, it's a little creepy to me how good this was at what it did. It's a little terrifying, but we're all just going to, we're going to have to live with it. We're just going to have to live with it until it decides to get rid of us. And as AI said, we're only one life form on Earth. And like Alec Baldwin said, I only shot one person on this set. And there's no reason we can't continue making a movie. See everyone next week.